In this episode of Detroit Performs, an artist follows his creative soul after a fluke accident. A painter achieves a great success in her life. And a near tragedy gives this painter a new outlook on art. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, MGM Grand Detroit, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to Detroit Performs. I'm DJ Oliver and today we're touring around the world-renowned Detroit Institute of Arts. It's no secret the DIA has been under a lot of scrutiny the past couple of years, but the institution stays strong. The three artists highlighted in today's show have also had to overcome unfortunate life events to become stronger in their life. First up is Daryl Golston, who used to create chalk murals right here on the very front sidewalk of the DIA. He could put details in his paintings and chalk drawings that one only thought a photograph could duplicate. But it wasn't until after a fluke accident that he realized what his art is all about. I tried to tell the story in my artwork. And when people uh, look at one of my art pieces, I want them to see something. I just don't want them just to see a picture. I want the uh, picture to kind of speak for itself. He uses a lot of colors to set the mood. He uses a black backdrop so the colors really pop. Uh, and so you really notice what he does with the art. It, you know, you can, you can see it, you can feel his emotion in it. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. And I've always had a passion for um, drawing and just being creative. I grew up to be a um, figurative, uh, abstract artist, uh, watercolor. I tried to do a little bit of everything. And I just love uh, painting. I love the visual arts. Art has always been um, uh, a part of my life. And it's been a, a real strong hobby for me. Uh, I've been involved with um, helping others you know, for years. And I've, um, I've been a director of different youth programs. I've been executive director of a community center. And I think that was the uh, main focus of my life. But art has always been a close second. And I was just kind of afraid to kind of uh, dive all the way into art and make a, a real 100% commitment to it. And since the accident, I decided that uh, I'm gonna really uh, concentrate on the art. And I think this is a second chance and a second opportunity to really do something that I truly love. Back in 2009, I was playing catch with a, um, one of the volunteers in the uh, community center. We got a little competitive throwing the ball back and forth and uh, the ball hit me um, right on the left side of my nose, which it broke my nose and broke my orbit. And I lost uh, sight over uh, a period of time. It was a gradual decline. My sight went down from um, probably 80% all the way down to 5% uh, in my right eye. In my left eye, I lost all the sight in my uh, left eye. And um, with my vision uh, impairment, what I've done is, um, I don't see that well, but I've been doing it so long that I um, talk to the kids and I get an opportunity to uh, tell them um, from the first time I sit down and meet with them is that you're going to have to help me and we're going to have to become um, as one. When he works with the, the youngsters at the community centers and, and when he teaches the art classes, uh, he's very passionate about uh, helping people to express themselves. And so um, it's fascinating to me because Regardless of the fact that he can't see, his, the vision is still there. I always ask the kids to draw big. And I think that's important for me to be able to see the images a little bit. And I walk around the classroom and I give the kids encouragement. And I say, well, you know, if I can't see it, then you can't feel it, okay? So I need you to make that contrast a little bit darker, you know, from the light. 
you know, just look at my face right here. And remember, the, the, the uh, light source is coming down right here, and this part is real, real dark right here, okay? In his art, you know, he can explain. I, 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 honestly, I don't know how, because I don't know where I would be uh, if, if I lost my vision. My art started to change when I lost my sight uh, dramatically because I was always uh, a detail artist. That was part of my style, and that's what I enjoyed doing. And when that happened, uh, I didn't, I couldn't put the details in it, so I had to change my style. And you know, from there, I haven't uh, really done too much uh, visual art. And I decided to uh, really uh, change the art form, and I started to. Uh, concentrate on music a lot more. Now it seems all the possibilities I got into producing music back in the uh, 90s, so now I'm just completing my last project, and it's called uh, Listen to Love, and that's featuring uh, my wife, uh, Daisy Love, and I'm quite sure that uh, when people listen to the project, they're really gonna hear uh, where the love is coming from. Daryl is just a great producer. He, he puts together records really well. He knows his artists. He can get a lot of good things out of the artist when he's producing his records. When we go into the studio to record, um, he listens to the artist, and he listens to your voice. He listens to the music, and he gets you to uh, understand what's going on in the changes of the music to bring it through vocally. Because I like the intensity that you come out of the, uh, the bridge and when you start the vamp, that was really good. I've never worked with anybody like him. Um, he can exactly, he can give you exactly what he wants you to do. Yeah, and yeah, uh, right. you, can, you can do it. You know, you understand him. There's a difference between listening to music when you are um, a visual person as opposed to a person that's uh, visually impaired. When you're visually impaired, you, uh, the music kind of consumes you and, and you hear all the little things that go on. I've detected a little bit more sensitivity to hearing certain anomalies in the music that, that maybe he didn't hear as quickly before. So uh, if there's a glitch in there, or there's a mistake or something like that, he tends to pick it up faster. Uh, I think he was a little bit behind with that. He has the ability to tap into the music yeah, and kind of guide you toward the direction you need to go in, you know, by tapping into you as a person. You know, most creative people have that intuitiveness about things, music or whatever. And, you know, once you click, I keep closing my eyes because it's, it's, it's what happens when you listen to music. I think I got a special connection with Daisy um, just because Daisy, I think, uh, understands, she understands music. She's been doing this all her life. And Daisy is one of those uh, rare artists that you work with that is very uh, coachable. You know, okay. so you want to keep it going and you want to keep that flow strong, okay? All right. Daisy all right, understood uh, the song because we wrote the song together. And we had a, um, a good time writing the song because we went back and forth in terms of uh, what does it mean to fall in love? You know, and I think the song is real personal to both of us. He had the surgery and so he's regaining his vision slowly. Uh, it was amazing to be there for the first day when they took the bandages off because his smile was huge. It was just the greatest feeling to be there for him, to see that and to see him regain it. And he's gaining it back slowly, a little more every day. Uh, over the, the time of six months, he'll be able to have, I'm hoping, roughly about 60% of his vision. And so I'm like anxious. I'm like, ooh, let's get you right back. We, we need to set up a corner so you can do your art. And you know, his music is his music. He can do that regardless, but I love to see him do what makes him happy, and his art is something that really, really makes him happy. I think um, me losing my sight has helped me find out who I am. You know, I might have lost my sight, but I gained my vision.
You can find out more about Daryl Goldstein and all the artists you'll see here on DetroitReforms.org. Kate Paul has had a varied career involving photography, graphics, and scenic paintings, but her biggest accomplishment to date is being an ovarian cancer survivor since 2010. Up next is Kate's story. Painting has always been here and always will be, and it's just by your own imagination that makes it happen. And then you, your job is to make the work, and then after that, it's up to other people to respond to the work. You get in real trouble when you start trying to think about what you're doing and how it will be perceived, um, and second-guessing yourself. I think you just have to make whatever, whatever's in your heart to make, and then see what happens, and then it's kind of out of your control. I ended up working in the guild system where older men would teach young upstarts like me in my early 20s. Anything that had to do with surfaces to paint backdrops for theatre sets. And I started painting anything that wasn't nailed down. And for a long time it was a heady world of two-story entryways and two-story great rooms. But all the time in the back of my mind while I was doing the paid work, when the paid work was done, I would always work on my own work. Because to me, the paid work was, you know, paid training. The more you practice and work at what you love to do, the better you get. And that's what's brought me to today. All that, all that was grist for the mill for my own work. I curate for a little microbrew pub. It's called Liberty Street Brewing. It's an old town Plymouth. They have a second floor wonderful space that I use uh, as a gallery space and I invite artists to come there and show on an eight week interval. So I have six artists a year. Currently, because unfortunately someone couldn't be there for this particular interval, that's when I usually drag some of my work there. Gilda's Club is a house in Royal Oak that is a cancer support house uh, for the cancer community for uh, adults and children with cancer and their caregivers. It is a place to go and they have all sorts of programs from oh, knitting, art classes, um, yoga, all sorts of different activities there so that it could be a non-industrial environment. It's a cozy, comforting place to be and it's free. Um, it is named in honor of Gilda Radner of Saturday Night Live fame who I, I understand is from Michigan. But in 1997, when they made this one, I was asked to donate, with the designer that I was working with, the two-wall mural in the lower-level children's play area called Noogie Land. But unfortunately, January of this year, of 2014, they had a faulty sprinkler malfunction or something, and it caused flooding on three floors and obliterating most of the murals that I had painted there. So I went and met the directress, who engaged me to come back and make all new murals. So I'm in the process, I'm about three or four weeks in, of making all new murals and painting like mad. A big fantasy land um, for the children. So when you walk into this space, you're leaving behind the chaotic world and you're coming into a world full of um, flowers with little faces and pegasus and animals and different lands, like there'll be dinosaur land and futuristic world. The reason being is that when you're in the cancer world, no children wants to see children with hair running and playing. So the brief is to make it playful and more imaginative so that we draw attention away from whatever is going on with you. And, and imagination is a powerful thing and it's a very healing thing to have something that's playful and not be serious all the time because a lot of the times the things we go through with having cancer is a very serious business. I'm delighted to be asked back to be able to do this because I feel like I'm doing it. I'm in the right place at the right time. Because when I painted these murals back in 97 and then in 2004, it never crossed my mind that I would be one of the brethren. So um, it's just a chapter in the book. It's not the whole book. I'm delighted that I can that I'm able to do this. And in a way, without sounding too boastful, I kind of feel like it's a bit of a legacy for me to give to them, because I'm one of them in terms of being having gone through a lot of similar things. So I may not be very good at going to support groups and things because I didn't feel the need of it personally, but this is something I can give them as, as being a participant in the whole nasty business. 
nothing focuses your mind more than a life-threatening disease, shall we say. But what I learned is that I'm not going to worry about what I can't do anything about. So you just deal with the things you're given because you never know what you're going to get. Everybody gets some bailiwick, has to, some cross to bear, and you just pick it up and carry on. So I think it's true, you have your moments. I don't show those moments when I'm crying in the bed going, this, this is terrible. But why, why stay there? Everything passes, those moments of pain pass and then you only remember the good stuff and you put aside the bad stuff. And that's what I want painting to do. I want painting to be, it's my own little mythology, it's my own little creation, it's my own little world. And, and hopefully it'll resonate past me, but I have no control over that. I get the joy of making it, and past that it's kind of out of my control. To find out more about Kate Paul and all of the other Detroit Performed artists, art events, and art programs, head to DetroitPerforms.org. Now let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around this community. To discover more events in Greater Detroit, visit ICSITY.com. Gary Meyer started painting in 1993 after a construction accident gave him what he believed to be a better sense of color harmony and artistic form. Now, a full-time painter, Gary prides himself on creating landscapes not only from places he has seen, but from his newly vivid imagination. My name is Gary Myers, I paint as G.C. Myers and I am a contemporary painter. I started painting in the fall of 93. I was working on a house that's next door to this studio and I had an accident where I had a ladder collapse under me. I fell about 16 foot, knocked out my teeth, uh, broke my wrist. Uh, I was pretty banged up for a few months and uh, I pulled out some paint brushes and some old airbrush paints that were the result of a failed experiment from a few years before and uh, jammed the brushes into my cast and you know started doodling and I don't know if it was the knock on the head or what but for some reason it just suddenly made sense. I was able to see color harmony, I was able to really see form even better. I became really obsessed and began painting on a daily basis several hours a day in between my job and completing the house. Within three years I became a full-time painter and I've been a full-time painter for the last, this is my 15th year right now, I'm going into my 16th year. It's all intuitive. I like bold color, but I also like color that has a lot of depth to it. Very seldom are you going to look at something of mine and just see blue. You're going to see bits of yellow, green, uh, maybe even a little bit of red in there. Paintings are really equally about texture and color. 
Uh, both are really vital, I think, for my work. Color really conveys the emotion and the texture just gives it greater depth and uh, I think that is one of the important aspects of it. I think that differentiates the work. The red tree is merely an invitation for people to come into the painting and then they get to see the color, the texture, the forms behind it. I like to have complex colors. It makes it more interesting for the, for the viewer and it gives them greater depth into the picture. And that's, that's what you're really looking for, is something that connects and keeps the eye interested. I'm expressing human emotion through the landscape. They're not scenes of local landscape. I want to just be able to express something on the, on the surface that expresses what I'm feeling. Painting is the one thing that I feel completely confident in in my life. And I think that's probably the real driving force. To find out more about G.C. Myers and all of the other Detroit Reform artists, head to DetroitReforms.org. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Reforms. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitReforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on coming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'd like to thank the BIA for letting us hang out here today. Make sure you guys come check it out for yourself. Until next Tuesday, get out there and show the world how Detroit Reforms, y'all. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, MGM Grand Detroit, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.